Baptist Church. Do you know anything about it? What is it that you do you know about this, the church itself? The Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad. You see markers all over the place that tell us that this was a stop on the Underground Railroad. It's significant for the role that the church members and the fact that the church itself is here because it was completely constructed paid for by African Americans. It's one of the oldest buildings in the city of Buffalo that has set um, in terms of black history. The second is the role that the church members played in the abolitionist movement and that includes the role they the role that the members um, and the space itself played in sheltering um, enslaved folks who were seeking freedom. The other part of the history of the church, the part that we actually quite frankly need to more to talk about is the role that it played in the progressive era. When when Reverend Nash, who was the longest serving pastor of this church, and he served for over 60 years, when he was here, the church members, and he himself, really led the effort toward black rights. Mrs. Nash, I don't know if you know, but she, Reverend Nash's wife, was, a, was from Buffalo. She believed in community gardens. So right behind that little green house that you see right behind, right behind us there, she had a garden and all that open space. The city made her get rid of it because it was city land. But we also want to bring back the community gardens and get all of us to really partake in making it a reality. So that we can all feel that sense that I feel that when I step on these grounds, it's holy. Not only because this is a place of worship, but because of the people who sacrificed and gave so much so that we could all have a different history. We could all have a different path in our life. So we're here to assist the steward. We have an amazing steward um, of this garden site. And that is Miss Gail Wells. I started the garden, um, I wanted to say, with grassroots gardens. So this was a grassroots gardens project. And um, we started it really at the Jesse Klepper um, and not at this site. We didn't come to this site until later on in that journey. And we felt like the church is one of the most iconic places in the Michigan Street African American Heritage Corridor. And so we wanted it to be loved and we wanted it to look beautiful. And so we started here, then we went over to the Nash House. And so it's really been the three spaces. When you're a grassroots gardens um, Sanction garden we work with grassroots garden and also the city of buffalo parks department you have to make a five-year commitment based on the history of this place and based on the fact that um, this is a place that is supposed to be um, a tourist site and so how can you have a tourist site and it doesn't look like it's loved and it's precious and it's precious to us but we want other people to come and know that it's special by the way that it's cared for. So we um, uh, two sites today. Some of us are gonna be right here at the church and some of us are gonna go over to Jesse Clipper, which is a short walk. Um, the Jesse Clipper, we had a gift of 100 plants from the Audubon Society. So we planted two trees, a bunch of perennials, and now we're going to do bulbs and we do it all in red, white, and blue because it is a site that commemorates all of the African American soldiers in Western New York who fought and lost their lives in all of the war. So all of these spaces are special. And so this is all to say that we have a history that's rooted in individuals who are nationally and internationally known. And there's something special about the city of Buffalo. I'm not a native of the city of Buffalo, but there are many um, movements and important people that have come from this place. And so I'm here to honor that. And I'm proud to be able to garden on these sites. Um, so just the, the framework for today, everybody who's here is encouraged to take part in the cooking again. The folks who are leading the cooking today will be on a panel discussion along with Pete and Rita and Jennifer Connor um, for, from Justice for Migrant Communities. So if you want to hear more about that, but you can also learn a lot while you are cooking together. So that is the, the idea of this. And our hope is that you um, might be interested and might work with us in the future to lead some cooking classes around this decolonize our diet, you know, in the community. Um, Gerard Places let us use this space for free. Um, they're very excited that we're here. Um, they are a transitional space for homeless folks. 
um, and children, mostly mothers and children. They have um, some adult education courses. They have freed up their kitchen of their own culinary class today, which are meeting right next to you in the classroom next to the kitchen. That they have students who are going to be really, they're also very excited about this concept. The organization that um, is in the formation right now is called Food for the Spirit. It's about racial healing towards ecological justice and equitable food systems. One of the first projects that we've done this year is put together a Buffalo Food Equity Network. It has upward 75 to 100 members that all identify as folks of color, predominantly African American folks, um, but some other folks who identify from other backgrounds. Uh, my name is Chef Alexa Joan, and today I was one of three lead chefs that um, brought a meal together with the help of community cooks to put on a feast of food that is close to our soul. It's not soul food, it's not fried and fat, it's not buttered and, and lard and everything else, but what it is, is is whole food, minimally or no process, that's made with love, um, that is meant to nourish the mind, the body, the spirit, and the soul. So today what we did was we came together and we created a feast, but we also learned from each other, we shared with each other, um, and we got to know how other people are working within the community with food education, with food justice, even with social justice, and understanding how food works together, how it brings people together, but also how food is a direct correlation to our health and to our community. But from my perspective as an African American in Buffalo, New York, and as a chef who is classically trained, I am learning as I overcome my health issues that understanding what I'm putting into my body is definitely going to make a difference. So my main goal is to educate people about food and how it correlates. So in terms of black churches, in terms of communities of color, when we come together and we come either for a repast or for a celebration, we usually eat heavy laden foods, heavy meats, heavy starches, heavy things that end up making us go to sleep. So what my goal is to help people learn how to make vegetables and start their plate. Help them understand that the main focus should not be on the meat, but make the vegetables the focus. The meat should be the side. We need to we need to get back to us being healthy and clear-minded. And that's only going to start with our diet. That's only going to start with what we put in our mouth, what we put in our food. It's going to help with our digestion. It's going to make you feel more alive if you eat vegetables, if you eat, drink water, if you're um, tasting things that you're not used to, like bitter foods or um, umami foods. You don't have to cook with a lot of salt in order to make it good. Use spices, use herbs. There's so much that I can say about food education, about nutrition, about cooking. Um, but really, it's really important that we are being aware of what we are eating on a day-to-day -day basis. This is me with getting these gardens going, or you know, I'm gonna run for off, whatever the thing is, you're gonna get in a group. And so you're gonna talk amongst yourself, you're gonna choose an idea, and then you're gonna come back to the group, and instead of telling us what your idea is, you're gonna perform your idea for us, as if it's like happening, you know, if it's in action. Because here's the thing that I've learned. Instead of saying, we will do this, I wish this, you start to act as if it's already here. You see it, you feel it, you taste it, right? And then it becomes more graspable for us. So again, there's a lot of good ideas in this room, but you're just for now, you're gonna choose one in your category, and you're gonna come teach us about it through performance. We like to do whatever we have skip. Which is when the group is ready to go, in order to tell them we're ready to listen, we go like this, we go lights, camera, action. So let's practice that, ready? Lights, camera, Got a nice big cabbage. You can get that. Right. Oh. It's so good to see it's you. Good to see you. How are you doing? They're doing great. They're starting doing really right? hard, yeah. But they're hungry right now. Oh, I got something for you too. Can keep our appointment for this week.
week, I always want to just come and check on you and see how you're feeling. And I appreciate that. I really do. I've been watching you, though, sister. You've been all around the neighborhood. You just help so many people, and people love you for that. You know that? You do some hard work. Well, that's what we're here for, right? Yes, peace and love. Yes. Peace and love. Now, yes. you, you pray for me. Okay. Keep me here, and I'm going to pray for you. Yes, that's, and that's what we're going to do. Yes. Pray for our community. Mm. <sighs> feel it so what's possible to get to see it, right? It's beautiful what you all just put together. And think about how beautiful a butterfly is, too. How delicate it appears, but also how powerful. Butterflies fly all the way down to Central Mexico every year and then all the way back up here on those delicate wings. So um, don't let the beauty, the elegance, the apparent fragility fool you. Our movement with all its four wings is super strong. Right? And y'all have homework, which is to actually take steps towards implementing all four of those things. And um, I'm looking at Becca and some of the other organizers in here to keep you in conversation about how do you move forward in creating, building these spaces that are liberatory zones? How do you move forward in making sure we know our neighbors, we can be generous and pray together? How do we move forward in telling the elected officials what they need to do to feed our children? Getting community mobilization around it, like all of these things really need to happen um, in order for Buffalo to have the food system we desire. All right, so you got the breakfast and now we're doing the lunch. And it's supposed to be all healthy according to our partners, right? It's most important is from farm, local farms to here. So we call it farm to school. Good deal? Yeah. All right, all right. Well, have fun, enjoy the rest of the day. It's a beautiful fall day in Buffalo. Doesn't get any better than that. And again, welcome, glad you're here. So uh, a lot of people kind of understand the basic principle that um, organic farming, you know, mostly means not spraying pesticides. Um, so one of the misconceptions with that is that sometimes uh, a farmer might uh, spray a pesticide or use a fertilizer, um, but they're more naturally derived products. Um, so that's sort of a misconception there. Um, yeah, that's so, you know, sometimes you get like Miracle Grow, like uh, fertilizer. Post is actually going to work with the soil to create that, um, to create all the nutrients. Um, so if you left this all like in one of these bins um, over time, it would break down. Uh, but there's a way to do it a lot quicker, and that's using worms. If I just put you know the paper in here, if I put like my you know old green beans, um, if I put the paper is part of compost. Yep. So the paper um, is really good for compost. Mm -hmm. So like your your food waste, mm -hmm. we'll call it like a green. And our newspaper, we're gonna call that a brown. Um, we need like that's the carbon and the nitrogen, which is uh, it's made up of. So as you mix them together, it breaks down into the compost. So yes, at the shelter we have five hens and one rooster. A lot of our hens actually come to us from, as strays from the field. Your name? Oh yes, Miss Sheila and her assistant manager actually make the chickens. So this is. Lea Marmalade and Rouge. And Rouge. Oh, yes. Rouge is Rouge. Yes. Yeah. Rouge is what's called a sex link chicken. There are some chickens that you can actually tell the males from the females when they hatch. All right. They have babies. They have babies. If there's a male and a female there, they do. These guys lay eggs that don't have baby chicks in them. No. But they don't sit on them long enough. No. They don't. As you can see, we feel a lot of different things, um, and all of it affects the taste of the egg and how the yolk tastes. So the richer the diet, the richer the yolk will be. Um, and so that's why a lot of times when you go to the grocery store, you have the organic eggs, which are often brown. But now that now you guys know, um, it just depends on the chicken. So what makes it organic is the, the food that they're feeding it, which makes that yolk a lot richer. So different breeds uh, lay different color eggs. Different heirlobes mean they're going to lay a different color egg. So we have some that lay white eggs, brown eggs, light brown eggs, and bluish green eggs. You know, it's eggs. I'm actually going to come around because this one she actually laid uh, a few minutes ago and it's still warm to the touch. So if you want to touch and feel, it's actually pretty neat feeling a uh, fresh, fresh egg. This is talk about farm fresh and good food purchasing. Um, I can come around while Christine answers questions. In our school food system. And the Good Food uh, Buffalo Coalition is um, about 20 organizations um, committed to uh, 
five values of the Good Food Purchasing Program, environmental sustainability, nutrition, strong local economies, valued workforce, and animal welfare. And we also have a commitment to racial equity and good food for all Buffalo residents.